uh, to sign in. And I'm used to uh, uh, Teams for work, you know. Oh, is that what you guys use? Yeah, Teams all the time. What is that through? Microsoft. Oh, yeah. See, I can't afford all that fancy shit. Yeah, you know what? No, this, I mean, hey, Google has everything you need. We could probably operate on Google, but uh, Teams, Teams, I think, just mo work smoother, you know, instead of having to get into like, uh, I'm not a big uh, Skype guy. That seems to always be a pain, you know. And yeah, Skype. Really never work. And you got to log in 55 times, and it's like, uh, it's obnoxious, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, I got this recorded just so you know. Yeah. Um, so I got to do my one, two, three, and then I can count the uh, two videos together. Because the way I'm doing it now after Gonzalez, I laughed so fucking hard. I had to uh, <laughs> start recording my screen to catch while I was laughing while he was talking. <laughs> because he was telling stories about, like, you guys driving up to Utica and stuff that were just. Yeah, yeah the car rides, that's part of the whole deal, you know. Yeah. We hard, right. It was hard to leave just because we couldn't get the car ride in on a Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so we have uh jimmy Fay, the captain of the utica yeti uh many guys say the heart and soul of the utica yeti i appreciate that that's yes. uh, flat flattering i don't know if it's deserved but i appreciate it now how long have you known paul yeah geez so i mean that goes back i mean paul's the first guy i ever talked to from uh tri-city you know and i mean i mean if i didn't talk to paul uh i would be you know without probably 20 or 30 of my best friends i've ever had you know i basically got out of college when i was 18 i was playing for the binghamton royals in the uscla which was at the time the uscla was like the league you know what i mean because there wasn't a huge professional presence um so all the guys uh all the men or the, the open teams in the in the in the spring that weren't in college would play in the uscla they had like Duke Tobey and Team Reebok, you know, Tri-City had a team, Crystal City had a Corning. There was a bunch of Long Island teams, Maryland teams, and that's where all the good guys went to play. So when I was 18, I played for the Binghamton Royals, which was awesome because I played with like a bunch of my high school, uh, you know, guys I looked up to that were older than me. I was the youngest guy probably on the team. And then, uh, and then we kind of folded the team. And when I got out of college, I, I reached out to Tri-City because I remember playing them and we had a pretty good time and a pretty good drink up after the game. So I said, well, I'll reach out. And I reached out to Necker and that's that's it, man. I mean, I just said, hey, I'm looking for a place to play. Would you would you allow me to come up and run with you guys? And he said, yeah, come up. And it worked out well. And I got to go to my first placid that year. I think this was like 2005, right? So we're, we're almost going on 20 years. So, um, went to placid i've been to placid every year every year since then you know so that was the beginning of it and that was the beginning of my relationship with some of my best friends brandon davis shannon sullivan brent dodge you know the dixes necker ferrells all those people so bob leary so it's a big family you know it was uh that was the beginning that was yeah. the beginning of the neckerism <laughs> the beginning of the neckerism, I love it because that is kind of how it is. Once you're in with Paul's uh, fold, he they kind of like hold on to you, and it's crazy. So you guys, you're talking like when you went to Placid, playing for Tri City and that other league. That was all outdoor, correct? That's all outdoor. Yeah, I mean, I had played some indoors um, up in Oswego, which was I think a short lived thing, and and then you know here and there around in some tournaments and and whatnot. But that was relatively unknown to most guys you know most american players i mean there were guys playing indoors but you know i mean i'm dating myself a little bit but but you know most guys weren't thinking about indoors at that time that was you know 20 years ago almost so um you know i think the hotbeds were like you had to be from boston or philadelphia or somewhere where there was like a big presence of indoor box across or from canada or on the res you know so i think uh just a average american players weren't getting into box that frequently um, you know, maybe the better guys were, but not the medium grade. <laughs> yeah. I had never even heard of it. I only played at MV for Paul and, uh, yeah, I, up until the firewolves moved to Albany and then I ran into Paul, I had never seen box and I was just like, wow, this sport is so crazy. I wish I had played this. Yeah. It's uh it's a different experience altogether. Just the, the speed, the, uh, the toughness of it because it's just everybody's in your face there's nowhere to run to like get away from people to really get space it's enclosed so guys aren't able to get away from you know guys like you 
yeah. Versace and Snow, that big physical defensive presence. It's uh, it's definitely different. So did you play defense when you played field? Yeah, I mean, well, I, I was originally I was originally a midfielder. Um and then uh in high school, and then when I went to Broome, I was a midfielder at Broome, and then when I went on to Casanova, or one of our defensemen blew his shoulder on like the first game of the year, and I had played long stick at Broome, so I said Oh, I'll jump in there. And then that was it. I never touched midfield again or offense. <laughs> I, uh, the, I wish like, I wish box was around longer, you know, because I believe it's like the true form of, of lacrosse. I think we've gotten away from the physical aspect of it a lot in the field game. And, um, and it's, you know, and for me way back then, that's like, that's how I wanted to play it physically, you know? So um, I wish it, I, I, I've always said to some of the guys that have started playing box. Now you got, you got to get involved. It's 10 times better. There's so much more passion. I think that goes into it. Right. And you're on the bench um, with these guys kind of battling pretty hard and you're exhausted and, you know, and you're beat up and people are injured and you're just fighting through it. And I think it's just, I think the, I think the emotion and the, the brotherhood that goes along with it is just a lot stronger in the box game than it is in field, in my opinion. Yeah, and that's something you guys really uh, like. Seems to be what sets the Yetis apart. That passion you're talking about, that fire. Um, like as you guys went through the year, you had some people starting to get injured, and it didn't. I mean, it affected you, but other guys were able to step up. You started seeing Versace getting like two goals a game, three goals a game. The D was really stepping up. Like Suits came out on fire, and then he kind of got a little banged up. Blaine kind of stepped up there to fill his role, and then that seemed to be the games that you guys won were the games where you had not just Alex, Ty and Neil scoring your goals, but where like the whole team was getting fired up that passion level. It's a fine line between getting carried away, going to the box and playing with that fire. And you guys seem to tread that line, like the entire season, you're either way over the top, kind of getting penalties and taking yourselves out of the game or playing with that fire and making the other team take retaliation penalties and kind of setting the tone. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think one of like the one of the most important parts of it is the transition game right and your trannies and i think that uh to have guys that can run the floor and score you know one it gets the bench amped up or defenseman scoring gets the bench amped up not that it doesn't happen with the offense but you know when guys get goals that don't normally get goals um and it changes the momentum you know and to have universal utility guys as i think i probably once was a utility guy now that i'm a little older i'm usually staying at one end of the court unless i unless i unless i see the clear path to the goal but uh you know to have guys transitioning like chuck or brian or um you know uh lightning lightning bolt peter um you know those guys scoring goals are great you know and and uh we need that i mean it's just it's such a momentum changer in a game when that happens um it adds obviously to the score and to to help us out for the wins but i mean that's it's kind of an under it's an overlooked part of the game i think you know everyone's like oh who do they got for forwards or what's their defense like well in my opinion it's what are the transition guys like you know how 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 good can they run the floor yeah and that really seemed to be the difference uh in the the games where and it's funny too because everybody thinks like the yeti's an older team they're a slower team the games you guys won were really where you're hitting your line changes, you're flying up through transition, you're getting the guys off the bench. And uh, the speed, like, it's it's very underrated for your team because I'm not going to say you guys are out there running marathons, but, like, you guys in short spurts, that emotional, like, just we're going to get into the corner, get the ball, like, you seem to win those uh, mm-hmm. those battles. It's very, like, selfish play. Like, I was clipping through um, some of Gonzalez's highlights, and the stuff you don't see when you're clipping through the highlights on the goals, like uh, Ty Hill comes back, gets a loose ball, and Brian knows to just run back and just go stand in the guy's way because he, he knows where Ty's coming with the ball. And just like mm-hmm. that little thing setting the screen, now you've got an odd man rush coming down the other side because Brian's smart enough to get back to the, the bench and get another forward out there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, we do have some younger guys. That's a learning curve thing, right? But I think that uh, some of the more experienced guys, you know those things, or, or if someone's coming behind you with the ball and you're in front of them going to the cage, you know, push the crease down, get the defenseman down lower. So, you know, the guy has more opportunity to look at the goal and more opportunity to score, and there's not a defenseman on him so soon. And, and yeah, I mean, it takes time to learn those types of things. But I, I think we do a good, a good job. You know, we came to a point in the season, towards the end of the season, where we, we kept saying, you know, 
hey, we got to do these things that we're talking about all the time in practice and, and stop talking about them and actually put them into action, you know, and that's, you know, I think, you know, we were getting caught a lot on transition in the beginning of the season and we were getting beaten some games or giving up a lot of goals in games and making them close games because, you know, we weren't, our transition wasn't where it needed to be. We weren't sending a guy early enough to the bench. Uh, maybe we weren't fast enough to the bench on both ends of the floor, but you know, once you start doing it and stop talking about it, then things turn around and start to happen. And I think that's kind of what happened into the playoffs, you know, is where we, 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 we realized that the transition was where we were losing parts of those games. We can win the game on both ends of the floor. Um, but it's in the middle, right? Where it's, where it's, where it's won, uh, truly. Yeah, I mean, that really was the spark in the championship game. Leota steals the pass, runs down, goes from being 3-0 to 3-1, but the whole bench you could just see. And, like, I love his reactions when he scores. Yeah. He is just, like, so energized. And then, yeah. like you said, afterwards, that really was the difference. You guys let him get that three-goal lead, and then you kind of just started hitting the transition, making sure you left the safety valve up high on offense, mm -hmm. you know, to get to the bench and get the change. And that really – uh I think that's kind of another thing that sets the Eddie apart from a lot of these other teams is you guys have two coaches that are that are standing above. They're not worried about getting out there, making sure they get their play in time, making sure yeah. they look good. They're out, <laughs> they're literally just standing above with a bird's eye view, looking at what's going on and how uh, and how you're getting beat, and then like what's open and things like that. You guys are really good at that. Uh, um, like on your, it's almost a power play setup, but you play it with regular man too, where you set up like the umbrella and the guy comes from the back post. Mm -hmm. now, is that something you guys work on all the time? Because that seems to be a huge amount of your goals is that working on the, uh, the one side, you draw the, uh, D way over mm -hmm. and then boom, they're hitting it across. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of our, our, our drills and practice are built specifically around that exact shot, right? That quick stick shot in the backside. Um, and that's, you know, the main goal obviously is to draw the defense out of position and then try to find the open guy. So we work on it in our warmups. Um, we work on it at practice, um, in, in, you know, in, in just, uh, offensive sets and, you know, doing offense versus defense, we work on it too. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, Chris Ryan does a great job on the backside, hanging out there. We got a couple guys who love that to, to sit on the backside and shoot it, you know, and get the right guys feeding and, and the defense in the right spot. And it's, it can be pretty successful at times, you know, so, um, but it's, you know, it's great too, to have coaches on the bench who uh, are, you know, always analyzing the game. And when we get to the quarters, we can get a, a fresh look on things. Things get a little chaotic out there sometimes. So to have them, you know, talk us down, you know, Johnny and Tony do a great job. And I think, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, we want to continue on and move on with the same core group of, of people and coaches and, and just continue to build on on what we have, you know, and, and those guys <laughs> do a great job, you know. Um, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're all so tight and, and close that, uh, you know, we don't want to lose a piece of that puzzle. And those guys help us out tremendously throughout the year. Yeah, it definitely is noticeable. And uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, so like you talked about the – on the offense, setting up the drills for the warmups and stuff. What is it like for you being a little closer to 40 playing against like Blaine's a monster out there, like his legs and just the way he can jump through the air. He's got to be so strong. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I always tell people I'm, I'm, I'm on my, I'm on my way out, you know, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've had a great, I've had a great experience with the cross in general. It's done things for me that I probably, uh, uh, you know, wouldn't have done if I didn't have it. I don't know what I'd be doing in my spare time. Um, you know, hopefully good things. Right. But I just, you know, I got pressured to get into it from some friends and my coaches when I was younger, I played football and basketball, but then they were like, Oh, you should play lacrosse. You know, I'm like, yeah. So I quit my first year. I came back the next year and I kind of fell in love with it. So I stuck with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm living out my best last couple of years and really enjoying it. Um, and you know, I, I, I'm, I'm one of the guys who says like, I'm not, I'm not going to do this when I'm 60. <laughs> I, uh, I'll know my limit. Yeah. I'm not going to come up and hang out and party. Right. But I'm not gonna, I'm probably not going to be playing, but, um, yeah, I still feel like I can keep up pretty good. Um, but there's guys out there that are athletic and fast, man. I mean, and, and I, uh, you know, I, I think I, I used to work out a lot. I don't do that anymore, but I still do a lot at Faith Farms, right? But I, I, uh, I, I like the competition. I like going against guys that are younger, right? It keeps me, 
keeps me motivated. But yeah, I mean, there's there's some athletes out there, man, and and it's tough to keep up with them. I I used to be able to outrun a lot of people, but now I feel like when I'm running, I got like a tube TV in my arms, and people are chasing me down. You know. <laughs> Oh, man. That's awesome. One of the things I wanted to ask you about now, your family is always at the games, but it's not just like, so what is it? Your wife and I I believe I get a lot of pictures and the videos, especially the Battle of the Barge. It was really cool to see like your uh, girls be able to run out out of the floor and like see you and be a part of it all. How awesome is it, Paul? Like make sure every Yeti event is a family event. Everybody's there with their kids. Everybody's kids are a part of what's happening. And yeah. I think that's important, right? I mean, I think that's what we're trying to get is to make it a family friendly uh, event and a place that the kids and the youth can go uh, to watch the games with their parents. Um, You know, my family's super supportive. So I'm very fortunate, right? I mean, even times where I say, don't, don't worry about coming today. You know, you came last week and the week before, just stay home. And of course I look up there and boom, they're there. I'm like, all right, they showed up. So uh, yeah, they've been really supportive and it's great. My kids love it. You know, I got friends who show up and wear some Yeti costumes, and that's the that's the podcast guys. That's the uh, Dinky Thomas crew, right? So they, <laughs> I always have to remind them, like, can you guys just keep that relatively, uh, you know, PG when you're you when you're shooting your stuff over there on on the podcast? Because I don't even know what I'm obviously I don't know what they're writing because I'm playing, but you know, uh, I got matt lachesney and dinky thomas and the muppet and a couple other guys on there you know throwing out stuff but yeah they like to come too i mean it's i'm looking forward to it growing to a point where like you know you get more fans um i I was just gonna suggest to paul yes uh today i was talking to him on the phone yesterday when i was driving for work down in pa but i was gonna say you know what you should do is hand out like plastic yeti mask to like the first 20 people in, in that into the gate you know what i mean because then you know people are wearing the masks it's look if there's a bunch of yetis in the crowd i think it'd be cool you know i always got ideas but i uh you know it's good to have everybody supporting it you know from my side and um you know you know my my family has been super supportive so is my brother and, and his friends so yeah your brother and his friends completely make the uh the live stream it like takes it to another level because we're sitting there watching the game and some of these games are some of the best lacrosse ever so we don't pay attention to the comments a ton but my wife makes sure like hey you guys need to see and especially some of the stuff they put in there they're uh really hoping they do come up with the money to sponsor one of the goals next year i can't wait to see what they uh yeah (laughs) what they have in mind they better they better put their money where their mouth is i'm just i was just trying to look at boogie wilson's another one Muppet Man, you know, uh, yeah, those guys love us. They're, they call themselves super fans, right? But I mean, I got to tell you, like every every Friday or Saturday, we're like, hey, is there a game this weekend? Is it was there a game? And they and they sit there and they watch them online, you know. So I got to give them credit. Uh, they're a bunch, they're a good group of guys, and they do. They sit there, they watch the games online. I have people in my neighborhood who watch the games online. So you know, the stream is awesome, right? It gives people an opportunity to see it that wouldn't be able to drive you know, the two hours and put in the road time to go up to see a game, which I always tell them they should because it's a good time, you know, but it, yeah, I'm glad we do the stream, but it really is a different experience there. Like you said, everybody running around cheering for it. It's uh, yeah. it's a blast and it's awesome. I, like I said, I love the comments that your brother, I went through them with uh Consola the other day. We were just, yeah, they, they find a way to make sure everything written is PG, but yeah. the best part was at first we weren't sure if it was somebody who like really didn't like your family the way they were talking like yeah. Jimmy's mom's drinking Captain and Cokes and like all this and then when he said it was your brother I was like oh okay that yeah. makes a lot more sense he's just being trolls right I'm like yeah. trolls yeah no nah, good trolls good trolls I mean you know my mom drinking Captain and Cokes that's probably about right on the spot so I don't think I don't think there's any you know I think there's truth to all that but uh, yeah I always have to. Some some people text me like, oh man, your brother. And I'm like, oh, well, what did he say? You know, and I gotta get on there and, and find out what it was. And but yeah, I want to keep it good for everybody. <laughs> and, and that they do. Uh yeah, it's been awesome. Now, Faith Farms, is that is that where you work full time or is that like a family thing and then you work full time on the outside? Yeah, it's 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 a family farm, right? We've had it since the the late sixties, early seventies. I mean, the farm itself has been there since the mid eighteen hundreds. So like the house I'm redoing right now, there is, I think the house is probably like 1850 or 60 and the barns from barns got a thing on the side that says 1918, but it was moved down the road from when it was up on the corner. But yeah, it's, 
something that I enjoy, right? I did it as a kid and my, my dad did it and my grandfather did it. And I'm hoping that my kids will take it over, but uh, we do beef cattle and livestock, right? I got goats and pigs and all that. And then I sell a decent amount of hay uh, in the summer. So we bale hay all summer and then, you know, throughout the fall, winter and spring, you know, we haul loads of hay and sell it and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, I thought it'd be a good place. Uh, I wanted to sponsor the team. And I thought it was important. I, I actually worked for Tigre, which is another one of the sponsors for uh, for um, the Utica Yeti. Uh, so my company, Tigre, which is a Brazilian international company, a piping company. So we do PVC mold injection and manufacturing of fittings and pipe and, and other uh, drainage or stormwater products. Um, you know they're involved in, in sponsoring the Yeti too. So I try to I try to get it from both angles. But you know they've you know, Tigre's done it every year for us. They, they give us a nice check this year to go to the national tournament to help out with some of that. So, uh, you know, they've been great. And uh, I like Paul. Paul markets it well. And, and uh, you know, the banners that go up and all the, the, the shout outs on the YouTube and the podcast are, are, are fun. So, um, you know, Faye Farms has kind of turned into this thing in the locker room. <laughs> I got shirts. I gave a shirt to Al Snow this year. I think he gave it to Pam. Um, but I got to give one to Consola. But yeah, those guys are my biggest uh, fans. It's that it's not even. I don't even see. Hey, Jimmy, what's up? It's uh, Faith Farms when I walk in the locker room. So uh, yeah, that's all I get anymore. Faith Farms. So, but hey, it works, right? Yeah, my favorite is you'll do something, and uh, yeah, then Bob up there on the the call. That's brought to you by Faith Farms. This penalty brought to you by Faith Farms. <laughs> Where's the beef? Yeah. Where's the beef? <laughs> I wish, I mean, when we first started, I mean, we had probably a hundred head of cattle, you know, so I mean, we had a lot of cows at the time, you know, for upstate New York, right? Because, I mean, we're not, you know, we're not in Iowa here, but uh, I, you know, that was a lot. And uh, so at that point, yeah, we probably could have sold beef to everybody, but, you know, we've gotten down over the years because it's just a lot of, it's, it's a lot of work. So, um, but we still probably got 20 or 30 at any given time and sell some, I'm up selling some off. I caught some yesterday and selling them off this hopefully soon. So, but yeah, no, I love it, man. Being outdoors and doing that, you know, uh, learn, I learned, I've learned a lot doing it. So I, I, I got to appreciate my, my father and my grandfather for teaching me the way of, uh, hard work and broken down machinery well that and you can see the difference in the strength of uh of athletes and people like when you're bailing hay moving cows around moving feed it's not like you're statically sitting there and picking up the weight and you're yeah. always picking up more than whatever the dumbbell is that you think whoever's picking up and yeah. you're picking these awkward positions and it just makes you so much stronger i mean that's probably why you're still playing as well as you are at um, yeah i'm pretty active i mean i I, you know, moss doesn't grow beneath my feet, right? So, um, I don't know. I, I guess I should probably give it to the other guys on the other side of the defense who are probably helping me look good. <laughs> or the goalie, you know what I mean? But, I mean, I played defense with Niles Miller and uh, Hutch for 15 years, you know? Yeah, and that was something. But indoor, you know, indoors more recently with Hutch, right? But, I mean, with Niles... I've played a long time and we've always been on a, a three, you know, in a three pair or the three, some four defense for tri city for years. I mean, um, we've always been the, de the defense. So, you know, we kind of know what we're doing and what our expectations are of one another, you know? So, you know, when I'm playing defense with those guys, I love it because I'm used to it, you know? Yeah. Now real quick, before we switch off, if anybody wanted to order beef from Fay farms, how do they get a hold of you? Oh, well, they could uh, they could probably just give me a shout 607-761-0183 uh, I might, you know, shoot a text. Um, I don't have an email set up for the farm, really. So you just have to personally get a hold of me. But that would be how they would want to do it. You know, I'd have some despair throughout the year unless someone wanted to buy a full cow. You know, I like to ship them alive and whole. <laughs> it's less work for me, you know. Yeah, a lot less work when you can bring it to the butcher live and they take yeah, care of everything. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I've, awesome. done, I've done a couple in the middle of winter and it's uh, not something I, I like to do. Deer are one thing, beef cattle are another. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more work. There's a lot more meat there on a, on a beef cow. Yeah, it's it's a little intense. Yeah. Can now, probably, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, you were just talking about the three of you guys playing. Now, when I first started filming the team, I didn't realize that you guys were all closer to my age. I thought you guys were all like college age kids. Cause like you said, the, the 
like Niles, Hutch, yeah. the passion you guys play with and like Gareth, it's, it's crazy. You look like a bunch of 20 year old kids out there playing like you're in the game seven of the, the finals. Every, every game looks like that. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you gotta hang around until you take our helmets off and we all have ball spots on our heads. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, physically, we're all probably okay, but when you know, you can tell how old we are when we take our helmets off. You see how much we're balding. But yeah, I mean, Gareth, me and Hutch may be struggling more than others, but I mean, Gareth, I played with. You know, he was he. I don't play with him in college. He was he was coming into college as I was leaving college, but we just remained friends because we got along at the time, you know. And then we've been friends since you know since that time, two thousand four, two thousand five. And uh, he uh, he played with the Voyagers, you know, and I was playing indoors at the time. And like I said, there weren't a lot of guys doing it. So we had a bond there where we were both playing indoors. And, um, you know, uh, we, we stayed friends for a long time. He's been involved in a lot of my travel teams and, you know, teams that I've went and played in different tournaments and stuff. And he's a, he's a good guy. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the video camera that makes us look good. Sometimes it doesn't feel good. <laughs> Like uh, Alex Cook, I was talking to him, and he said, he goes, I always feel like I'm going faster than you watch the video camera, so I don't know if it's the camera. I was, people always go, man, you were running really fast today. I said, yeah, I hope so. I was trying to run real fast. I just don't know how fast I was running, you know. I, like I was saying before is I remember when I, I I was fast as hell, you know. Now I Now my kids are like, hey, race me, you know. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to kill you in the race. Um, which I do because I don't want them to win. Right. I want to always keep the upper hand since I'm getting older. But uh, uh, I went, once I start running, I go, oh, my God, it's painful. You know, <laughs> I, have to, I have to get in the groove. I have to get running for a little while before I realize that uh, that I can stretch out, you know, that I need to stretch out a little bit. But, yeah, I, I agree with Alex on that for sure. Yeah, I think we, I think we all in our minds think everything looks a lot more graceful than it really is. And then you watch it on film and you go, God, is that how I look or yeah. <laughs> I thought I was doing, I thought it looked a lot cooler than that, you know? <laughs> now getting to be one of the, uh, the older guys on this team and getting to watch like some of your younger guys, uh, how, like, what are you mainly trying to, to tell like Pete Leota or a guy like that? Like, what is your best advice for, for somebody like that as they're playing or other young kids <laughs> who want to get more into this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I coached. I coached in high school for a high school team in Vestal for, for women's JV. And then that was a long time ago. And then I coached TC three for five or six years. And then I started a couple programs in North Carolina. I started the box rats program in North Carolina, which is, you know, the men's team, uh, which then turned into the Oak city owls. And then, uh, and I started uh, a youth program down there with, um, with Red Devils Lacrosse, so I started a box program down there with Sean Gracie from Philadelphia and, and uh, Scott Olive uh, from originally from Long Island, but from North Carolina. And I, I do, I really love uh, you know giving guys some insight to the game, and uh, you know, but guys on our sideline, I mean, I, I think a lot of it's just composure. You know, I try to try to manage my end of the bench, you know, with the defense, and try to make sure that <clears throat> we all understand, like, hey, you know, the goals are going to be scored, things are going to happen. We got to keep our composure. We can't lose our cool. Obviously, penalties, you know, get us in a bad spot. We're used to penalties. We love them, apparently. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, and then as as the game goes on, and I just see small intricacies of things that guys can change. I don't want to change any way any way a guy plays because that's just what is natural to him. But I mean, the small little changes if I can help him out and say, hey, you know, hey, when you go into the corner. And you're having trouble picking up that ground ball with two hands you know put one hand on the boards and scoop with one hand that way if someone pushes you from behind you don't get boarded you know or um other little things about you know carrying the ball up the field or like we talked about before like hey you're coming down as a guy behind you with the ball push the whole crease down you know cross check some guys get everyone moving down so we have more space to work up top and and i think they do a great job you know without without um Davey and Peter and some of those guys transitioning up the field. Um, man, it's a tough game to go from one end to the other without transition guys. And and the younger guys on the team are usually those players, you know. Um, but th they've done a good job picking it up, right? And that comes back to having coaches who can help out some of the younger guys and and every, you know, but everyone's got to be willing to learn, right? I mean, if if you if you if you're being told something and you can't absorb it and listen, um, and then enact on it, you know, then uh or act on it, then, you know, it's worthless. Right. So I was just, you know, I, I always try to keep things positive and that's, I think that's part of it too, is 
it's hard to dig yourself out of a hole and it's hard to win games where there's you know a lot a lot of adversity going on if you can't stay positive about it and try to get back out of it so i think that that's my biggest thing with the team and with the younger guys is you know three goals four or five goals isn't a big deal right i mean in 30 seconds left it is but i mean if there's a couple minutes on the clock there's time there's time you know don't give up we just got to keep pushing and and I think I, that's the one thing I love about boxes. It's usually is who's the bigger, you know, who's the bigger grinder, you know I mean? Who's going to fight for the ground balls? Who's going to fight for the Lucy's? Who's going to fight in the corner for it? Who's going to fight harder on defense, you know? And, uh, and those are the things that are the most important. Especially the last, uh, like you said, the last 30 seconds of a game, it's, uh, it's crazy how many lead changes you'll have. You'll have a whole game where you have like 10 goals scored. And then in the last 15 minutes, you have eight goals scored and you're like, <laughs> what uh, it is it's i, I gotta like the, I, I don't know maybe it's just me and how i look at it but i feel like the last 30 seconds is there's always a goal you know what i mean and and i and i hate when other teams have the ball at the last 30 seconds it's nerve-wracking i feel like i feel like we won a lot of games this year but we gave up a lot of those like goals with like 20 seconds left in the quarter or 10 seconds left in the half and you're like ah why, how can we give those up you know what i mean if so it gets even scarier when uh when you know it's tied or something like that or you're tied and they got the ball and you're like oh my god if they score yeah Which, i mean fact, if we held them without scoring for the second half and they score it's going to be painful you know and so it's it, it is it is weird how that happens i don't know murphy's law right yeah and it's such a uh it is such a momentum swing. Like you said, at the Nationals game, Leota scored the one goal, and then with point, like seven seconds left, he scores the other one before you guys go into halftime to tie you up. It yep. is crazy how much those 30-second goals at the end of the quarters really like mean for moving forward. It's like going in to the half, you either have that positive headspace where you're like, yeah, we just got one, we're coming back, or it's that, oh, my goodness, they just got one. It's a kick to the nuts. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's total, total momentum swings. And that's, like I said, that's the other – part of the two which uh which i enjoy about boxes that the the momentum is so important <laughs> it sucks when you're being deflated i can tell you that when yeah. everything's quiet on the bench there's a problem you know what i mean the bench should be loud you know people should be yell i mean not yelling at each other but people should be yelling you know cheering each other on Dang I, six. Per I personally like some type of speaker or something in the background playing music you know techno music or some type of <laughs> some type of heavy metal in the background because i think it kills the silence and the monotony of the of the box you know so i don't know some guys may not like that but i, I like the i like a little bit of craziness in it you know yeah yeah you guys uh you guys seem to thrive on that now yeah. how long were you in north carolina yeah i was down there for i left tc3 when i first went to play with the rockets um or after i got done with the rocket that's there's is where things go to die up behind me these are all my old helmets but uh and this warthog <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh yeah i left to go down there like end of 2012 so it's down there from 2000 and maybe to maybe beginning of 2012 whatever uh, through 2018 so probably six years about six years so that was fun. I mean, there was I started the box programs down there and did a lot of played a lot of field down there with some with some other teams and reconnected with one of my old buddies, uh, Brian Welsh, who's from Ithaca when I was down there is a phenomenal cross player, too. So we he actually played with the Mace and I think Ty Hill up at Lemoyne. Um, but uh, we uh, connected with him again down there. I haven't seen it. hadn't seen him in a long time. So we got back to being friends. I still talk to him quite a bit. And I want to try to get him on the Yeti next year. It'd be a huge, huge deal. He he played in the, he played for the Charlotte Copperheads in the PLL when I played for the Rockets. Um, they seem to always have the upper hand on us. But uh but they had some good players on that team too. I think guys that are still playing, you know, still played up to a couple years ago, Ryan Hoteling and um trying to think of some other guys, but you know, it was a. Uh, it was a attempted start similar to like the PBLA right now where they were starting another, you know, professional box league and um, it didn't last that long, but it was fun. Fun while it lasted. A lot of road miles, man. We, I've put on a lot of miles for the cross over the years. Is that where, is that what brought you down to North Carolina was playing in that league? Uh, no, because I was playing out of Philadelphia for that team or, or Allentown or Reading for that team. But uh, no, I met my wife and then I moved down. To north carolina where she was living and uh took a new job down there 
stayed down there for a few years. I mean, obviously knew I wanted to come back because this is where all, you know, the lacrosse I wanted to play with was up here and there was more indoors up here. And then, you know, I wanted to get back to the farm, obviously, at some point. But, um, yeah, so I went down there with my wife and then we ended up moving up, uh, you know, six years later, come back. So. And we're definitely, I mean, as a Yeti fan, glad to have you there. Now, yeah. you and several other players drive to Utica. It's just crazy how Paul convinces all of us that Utica is where we, we yeah. want to go. Because I also, it's two hours for me to get out there, but we all show up for Paul. Is yeah. there any reason you can think of, or how do you even describe it? I can't ever explain it in a way that makes sense, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I think for me, it has to do with my my loyalty to Tri City as a club, right? And and all the good friends I have there, and all the good times I've had there, and I've never had a bad experience with anyone in the club. And uh, it's a big family, and we hang out together, we play together, we party together, and uh, everyone gets along great, you know. And uh, so that's part of it for me. And then you know, we randomly had this like little night, this one night, like. I don't know what it was like a three on three or some type of tournament we had out in uh what's the place out there towards Herkimer, or the sportsplex or oh i don't know which yeah yes. whatever there's this there's this rink out there that uh we had this three on three tournament and you know there was a bunch of guys from tri-city and i think rodney red eye and some guys showed up and then jesse demay showed up with some guys from binghamton and i hadn't seen him in a while either because i had kind of just moved back and uh, I wasn't, you know, hadn't been out and around. And so we got talking and they ended up winning it. And it was, you know, like a six or seven team little rendezvous. And uh, so the spring came around and then me and, and Paul and uh, Dave Sakosi started talking about, you know, trying to put a team into the IBLA. So we started discussing uh, that. And, and so we decided to move forward with it. And then as we were looking for players, I said, hey, you know what? I got to, I'm going to hit up those bingo guys, you know? And so I hit up the mace. And uh, he hit up Consola, and uh, and then we had a, another guy from who plays for the Eels with us for a little while. But we just started, you know, making that road trip, and uh, and I think that they kind of fell in love with the Tri City group too, and the friends and the people they hang out with, and that everyone's you know a, a good time. So we've just been tearing up the highway, man. I mean, they could probably write a country song about us, you know. But you know, we've got uh, you know we're. We all try to travel together. Consola always has to sit in the back seat. We don't let him up front. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've got little nuances, right? You know, there's a little, there's a tree on the way up 81 with a big hole in it when you get past Cortland. So, if you know, we got to hold our hand up and match the circle. And we've got to listen to at least five or ten minutes of uh, religious music on the way up. Um, and then after practice or games on the way home, we've got some other obviously festivities but uh or uh maybe habits but um but yeah i mean we we just we roll together you know that's part of our crew and and it's made it a lot more enjoyable for me right if i was doing it by myself during the week for practice it'd be pretty boring i used to do it when i lived in ithaca i would i would drive to syracuse meet up with sakosi we would drive to the utica summer league we would play and then i'd drive the two hours back home you know and we'd do that twice a week um and it just, you know, it's a lot of road time. And I mean, I've, man, we've put some serious miles on this past summer for lacrosse. It's been intense. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you're talking, you guys are going up at least once a week for practice. Uh, some weeks there was two games or like the battle on the barge weekend where you're there Friday, Saturday, all day, mm -hmm. Sunday. It's, that's, uh, that's a lot of, it's a lot of driving. And it's awesome that you've got the three of you, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. The three amigos. <laughs> we're gonna have to get some uh some cowboy costumes and some sombreros next year <laughs> that would be sweet you guys should definitely come in with us <laughs> that's uh yeah, I, i'm glad though you know what it you know i think sometimes you could like grab a random group of three guys and it would work out horribly i've had that happen before or then i just started driving by myself um, and I'm pretty easy to get along with, but you know, after a while, um, but man, that's, that's probably the two best guys I could probably hop in the car with and roll with is, is DeMace and Gonzola. And we hang out and we hang out off the field too. You know, uh, of course there's a decent age gap between some of us. Gonzola is younger and DeMace is in the middle, but I mean, we, you know, we do, we do hang out on the weekends, 4th of July. We, you know, DeMace usually has something on the 4th of July, but, uh, Sometimes he attends it. Sometimes he doesn't. He goes to bed pretty early on the 4th of July. Most years, maybe like 3.30 or 4 o'clock. But at the same time, 
we all, you know, we take care of the house for him. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we're all good friends, man. And it's, it's been really enjoyable to have those guys and I, I hope it continues, you know? Yeah, me too. I'm really hoping, uh, we get to keep doing Yeti live streams. This has been a blast. I can't believe anybody ever watches these, but that's kind of, I'll cut this part out, but like, cause he wants me, you, Jesse DeMaze, and then suits to uh-huh. all sit down and, I think for that one, we're going to have to go somewhere. I don't want to do that one online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, that would be pretty funny. I mean, they're pretty, pretty, pretty. I mean, yeah, most people might be ruthless on suits, but it might be somewhat self-inflicted wounding. But uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but he's a good dude, man. He's a good kid. He's a young kid. He's, he's learning. He's learning the way of the Jedi. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, man, you know what? Every week I show up to the arena and I say, Hey, dude, what do you need? You know what I mean? Because I want, I feel it's an obligation of being a captain and I feel it's an obligation of being a friend and I feel it is an obligation of being part of the team. What do you need? What do you want me to do? I mean, the dude's running around like a chicken with his head cut off. You know, he's got boxes flying here and boxes flying there and shirts here and shirts there and banners and you know, set this up, do this on this table. He runs down the hall. You know, and I go, oh, I forgot the money, bring some money back, put some money on the table for the shirts. He takes back off over there. He's getting the uniforms ready for the locker room. I mean, the people that support him, you know, with Bob Leary and Andy Farrell and his wife and, you know, my my wife helps out and, and uh, Kiefer and uh you know, there's a lot of people's families that that help out, you know, Brandon Davis's family too. And and I mean, it's just, it's tough. I mean, it's a lot of logistics to put together for the get for a game. Um, even for practice, you know, he's always got the water bottles. Everything we need is always there. And I can tell you that I've been, I've been through teams. I, I'm right now, currently I'm laying out all the jerseys and shorts that I've ever played for on, on any team. And I'm going to make a huge collage of it. I'm up to probably 70 different teams at this point that I've talked, that I've played with, you know, and I can tell you that this, that Paul runs our squad, in my opinion, better than most probably college programs, <laughs> probably better uh, than any club team, um, probably better than any uh most most i say any that's a it's a very strong statement but better than most and you know travel teams i mean i mean he's got it down you know and that's what we need i mean it, when you can show you can bring in players and you can show other people that that you're working for an organization that's run professionally and that you're going to have an enjoyable experience it it goes it it's uh it leaps and bounds uh with people because it's it's just something that you don't get every day. Usually you pay and then you get like a bunch of ragtag things going on and you show up and half the other team doesn't show up and you do this and you do that and you get a bunch of broken promises, you know, and, and that's not what we do. You know what I mean? I think everything that we talk about and that we embark on in the beginning of the season, um, it, we do. And then uh, there's a lot of extracurricular things that go into it. Right. Being able to practice at the odd and then, you know, I think it's the Nexus Center next year and play in the odd. I mean, you can't, there's no other teams that get to do that. I mean, even college, I mean, even, even most small college teams don't get to do anything like that. I mean, you're going to talk division one and that we're talking something different, but the venues that he's provided us and the things that he has done for us as players and as friends and as family over the years. Um, and I'm not even talking about Yeti at this point, but just in general, um, he's just an awesome person, salt of the earth. Um, one of the best friends I've ever had and a guy that I know if I called right now and said, uh, there's an angry mob outside my house. I need help. I could guarantee you he would drive. He would not think twice about driving down here. You know what I mean? So he's just, a, he's just, a, he's just, he's just a cool dude. You know, I mean, I could say a lot more explicit, cool things about him, you know, that, you know, I usually have to watch my mouth a little bit, but you know, he's just a, he's a really good person and a really good friend. And, this is this was awesome for him because um this was awesome for him because it was a passion for him because he can't do it right he's not playing and he's playing right but he's not going to play it at the level and it allowed him to get engaged into something in a more serious fashion than just maybe club or something right so um you know this is a passion for him and and i think it's a passion for other guys you know if you talk to guys like like Shannon Sullivan, 
you know, they wanted to get back into uh, and play at a super competitive level. Um, and that's that's why he took up the goalie position was because that's something he could do and play on the team and be involved in this type of program. And I think I think it's awesome. He's done a phenomenal job. Um, but whenever you can be involved in a type of program that Paul's put together like this, um, I you want to ride it out until it dies. Right. Because it's it's just super enjoyable. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. He uh, buy equipment. That's crazy. <laughs> And I mean, you take awesome. when your season started, I didn't even know. I thought I was going to film a couple of highlights at Collar City games. Yeah. And now it's kind of evolved into this, which is awesome because I can't do any of the physical work that I used to do because my back all jacked up. Yeah. But I can actually like, yeah, he just he inspires everybody, makes you feel useful and gives you something to do. I don't know. It's yeah. hard to hard to explain, Paul. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, we're swearing. I mean, you know, either down. <laughs> I just, you know, I mean, I just can't. Uh, just... Yeah, I'm glad. I, I guess I'm glad I can call them. You know what I mean? When I was what 22, you know, or 23 or whatever, how old I was. I'm glad I called him, and I'm glad he was the first guy I talked to, and I'm glad he was the first guy I met because you know, just from right then, I was like, man. This guy and me, we could hang, you know what I mean? And and I think that's how a lot of people view him. He's you know, he he's a little bit, he's a lot to handle. <laughs> but I can tell you that uh that it's it's fun to handle, you know what I mean? It's like uh, and, you know, it's like that damn watery thing that you try to hold in your hand and you try to keep catching it, you know what I mean? But I mean it, it's fun. And I can tell you that there's things that he said 15 years ago on the field at at at, at Placid that we still say. And it will yeah. say when he, and it will say when he dies. You know what I mean? And what you know, necrisms we call them. But I mean, you know, still things that we'll say, you know, you know, Brit, you know, I, I, you, you can edit this out, right? Yeah, things like you know, Brits are like, what does that mean? You know, and, and then the one time, and then the one time we're sitting there, he couldn't make class, and we're, I think we were playing like Budweiser or something. We were, no, we were maybe in the Open Two Championship or close to it or something like that, playing Budweiser, which was a sick team at the time. And uh, he, we got him on the phone, and he, he's just screaming. You know, we can barely hear what he's saying, but then he's just like, bite the hump. Bite the hump, and he's screaming, "Bite the hump!" You know, and we're all screaming and yelling and getting amped up. You know, what does that even mean? You know, and then, but then of course we, you know, now we still say it, man. Bite the hump, break. You know what I mean? And and there's a million other ones too that that we say. Oh yeah, no, I yeah. laugh because yeah, twenty that. twenty years ago, I had Paul as a lacrosse coach. Never saw him again, yeah. and just in those two six month periods, so you figure maybe a year total time knowing him. There's still that I say every day. So when my wife finally got to meet Paul, she was like, Oh my God, this is, yeah. Okay. I get it now. <laughs> oh, it's awesome though, to have someone that passionate and dedicated to something that you're doing. You know what I mean? Cause it's yeah. what, you know, we're playing, we're, we're, he's enjoying it, I'm sure, but we're enjoying it because we're getting to play. And, and so it's to have someone on the back end of it, that's that passionate about it. That's where it's, that's where the the benefit really comes in for everybody is because you got someone there who's going to do exactly what they said they were going to do. Yeah. And not just do what he said they're going to do. I mean, if you think about it, he somehow he's always managed to get whatever team he's coaching to be like the next level. Like he somehow got you guys. It miraculously happened. You guys are in lax and mm -hmm. you're playing against, you know, the best, some of the best players in the world. And when you figure that this team was originally just so basically you and Dave and Sully and a bunch of guys mm -hmm. could play competitive lacrosse and somehow Paul has turned it into a live stream. You guys have, you know, mm -hmm. hundreds of people that watch. You guys have almost a thousand views by the time the game's over, which we did yeah. championship games in the NABLL that don't get what your regular season games get. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know that that's the long arm of of the Tri City family too. Is that we just there's so many people involved, and 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 really awesome people. Gino and Dixes and the Farrells and and uh, Bob Leary, and I mean these people have been involved. There's so many years of experience that are in the Tri City family. To add another branch to it, like the box part of it, is awesome. And these people have you know so many connections and and have really good relationships with people in the city and the town and. It's a great place. I'm hoping that it just thrives there. You know, when we were in Prague this summer, 
me and Demace and Chuck and Tony and a bunch of us and Kiefer went over there to play. Niles met us over there. Um, Niles met us over there via Mars. Um, we basically, <laughs> you know, it's a little field in a little town, but they get a, they get five hundred thousand people who just show up to watch these games, and it's awesome. You know, we're like, man, that would be awesome to have just a some type of city center feeling where you could do it. And I think that I think if there's a place to do it, it's in Utica because you're right downtown. There's places to go. There's things to do. There are hospitals across the street in case someone gets banged up. Um, but you've got all the rinks and everything right there. And I can't imagine a better place to do it. So I'm hoping that, you know, everything that they're trying to do comes, comes true. Um, because it's, it's that, that, that club has put so much into lacrosse. Um, and, uh, I kind of forgot where I was going with it all, but it's just, uh, it's just, you know, I'm glad that they're, I'm glad that it's working out for them. And, uh, you know, it seems to be the right venue to, to put, the lad, you know, Lasni or Laxni, whatever they call it. it, used to be Lasni, but to put that and to put the Yeti and to put a lot of youth programs, I think even women's box is going to pick up a ton of pace. So to do those types of things in Utica, because it has the capacity and the hotels right there, it's going to be, it'd be an awesome thing. And I'm just hoping that it all works out for everybody, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. So I was at Precision, which is why I got the hat on now. I uh, interviewed the kid down there, um, Ryan Adamzak. He plays for Collar City, he plays for Bang City. But when I walked in the store, I was dying because the one kid that was there, he plays at Sage. He was like, his name was Colin. He's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm a Tri City guy. He's like, I love Paul. I know Bob. And, all. and I was like, how? I am down in Albany at 10 o'clock on an afternoon, like 10 o'clock yeah. on a freaking Tuesday morning. Yeah. And I run into a college kid who used to play for Paul. Like, everybody seems to know. Like you said, yeah. the connections that they've made, the way that they're growing the sport. I can't wait to see really in like five, ten years as the the youth program of mm -hmm. Tri City starts to like age into this because it's been outdoor for so long and you guys have some amazing outdoor teams. But to be able to really get that youth program in there, I think it's gonna be crazy what the Yeti team ends up becoming. Yeah, it'll be nice to see. It's uh It'll be nice. And I, and I actually, I really wish I still had the passion for field that I used to, you know, but I just, I just kind of dwindled over time and I just, I, I'll go to Placid obviously to play with Tri-City. Um, if someone asked me to play in, in a tournament somewhere, I may help out, but I just actively don't seek any outdoor lacrosse. You know, it's, I try to, and I try to be a, a good ambassador of the game, but I guess I'm a little bit selfish at times and that's kind of, my mindset is box, 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 box. That's, you know, indoor lacrosse. That's all I want to play or mostly what I want to do. And I, yeah, I hope it is successful for them over time. I mean, it's, I'll do whatever I can to help out because they did whatever they could for me in the beginning, you know? Yeah. Now, do you guys have any youth programs in Binghamton area or? No, I mean, yeah, there's, there's youth field, right? There's not, there's, I don't think there's any youth box. I've been asked a couple of times to help out with it. I just haven't gotten involved. Um, it's kind of a sad state of affairs down here and it's it's kind of a bummer um there is youth and there are people who run youth programs and and we do it and i appreciate that and 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 there is a lot of good lacrosse down here as far as anything after like the club level youth level in high school that's it i mean the summer league down here used to be awesome it used to be guys from ithaca would come corning would come syracuse teams would come there'd be binghamton teams there'd be you know, Vestal teams, you know, everyone had a team and you'd had this huge summer league and there's there probably 15 teams in it. And then they just packed up and shipped it off and the guy moved and, you know, then someone else took it over and it was so, so, and then, and then it then just dwindled and dwindled and dwindled. There's no summer league down here. We don't have anywhere to play. And uh, that's why we drive North, you know, but it's disappointing because there is a lot of people, but not a lot of people stay down here either. You know, some people come back, but, not a lot of people stay in the Binghamton area right now. You know, there's just not as much to do for jobs and stuff. So people move and of course then they play wherever they go, but it is a sad state of affairs down here for open and adult lacrosse. I mean, the high school still produce some really good teams, you know, uh, main end well and Shenango forks and uh, Vestal and they still produce pretty good teams, but, um, and, and there are youth club leagues, but nothing for box and then nothing for, um, nothing for uh adult you know open lacrosse i don't know it's probably something i'll get involved with in the indoor part of it maybe once i finally hang it up but i'm trying to live out my last couple of years on earth 
<laughs> well, I mean, you, so you I easily, <laughs> yeah, you easily got a couple more seasons, and it's not like you're getting blown out of the water yet. So. No, I got a couple more. I've been fortunate that my legs haven't. By the way, out. if that was the case, then yeah. Thank probably, you, Thomas. So. Jimmy Faye looks fat. Yeah, I make today. him seem like very, a cripple, very right? Young man. Yes, he is. <laughs> How is uh? Now, know. what did Sully play in field? Because I I could not believe he has only been playing Sully goalie in box for what the second year. Yeah, he was a yeah he was a defenseman, a really good defenseman too. Yeah, I mean he you know, Sully in in his in his beginning. I mean I kind of met him probably when we were. You know, he was probably what tw late twenties or early thirties, and I was early twenties. But I mean, yeah, his uh, he was um, a defenseman, and he was good, a really good defenseman, had a really good stick, was really good at throwing checks. You know, yeah. But I, he messed up his ankle. I don't know. He can probably elaborate on the story, but he messed up his ankle overseas when he was in in the military, in one of the. I don't know what it was, Iraqi freedom or something like that. He could tell you, but he fell into like a tank hole, and like snapped his ankle and messed it all up. And then he never, uh, never fully like recovered. So that kind of took maybe a speed away. I don't know. I mean, of course now I'm talking like I'm, yeah. dead. oh, what happened to me was, but he, uh, yeah, he got injured. And then I think, you know, and then, and then, you know, he was playing in Placid in the Tri-City Summer League, but I think he still had the passion to get into something more competitive and maybe a little more organized uh, than just summer ball. And so that's kind of where I think he decided, hey, you know what, I'm going to jump into this position. And he did well. I mean, he's done well at it. I'm, ha I'm And I'm, I'm happy he did it, right? Because it gives me more time to spend with him. Yeah. You know? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. He, I could not believe it. Like I said, you guys have, uh, like, I don't know. It's pretty much a good problem to have, but you have a serious decision to make when it's Crosby, Sully, and Mario yeah. for a first year goalie is really starting to, yeah, you know, come along. He had his, you know, he has his shaky games, but like some of the times when he's out there, you're like, wow, I can't believe this kid just started playing. Oh, I know. Some of his saves are outlandish, right? I mean, he's so he's so uh, he's so athletic that I mean, some of the saves he makes you like, God damn, you know? Yeah, and. and, it, and it, and and Crosby, I played with Crosby for a long time, and it's kind of went in patches. But I think he was part of this PLL league I played with. I think he was with me on the Rockets. I don't know if he played, stayed with the team, but he was there for a while. And then, um, and then we played it, it with the Laser Sharks together quite a few times up at the Lasni and some other tournaments. Um, and then, then he moved. I think then he moved south, and I hadn't seen him in quite a while until he kind of popped up. I know I ran into him somewhere. Ran into him in Philadelphia in another tournament a couple of years ago, and then when he came up this summer, I, we re reconnected a little bit. And, but yeah, I mean, it's they're all different goalies too. You know, they all do. They all play a different game. So you know, Sully's kind of big in the net and takes up a lot of net, and and, and it doesn't bite too hard on the fakes. And you know, Crosby's kind of a mix between Mario and uh, Sully, and and he makes a lot of great saves and, and and does a lot of good things. And Mario just comes out with some crazy outlandish saves sometimes, and you're like, man, that's just wild, you know. And I love yeah. them all. I tell you, man, I, I always try to give kudos to Mario because I mean that guy, you know, comes to every game, every practice. He's always willing to help. He's always doing, you know, when you know you can't dress all three goalies, and he's just super involved, and he's just a really 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 good teammate he's the type of teammate that anyone anyone would want to have you know because he's there regardless supporting playing um helping out you know what i mean and it, it's that's that's part of it yeah and it's crazy to me like he drives to utica to be the third goalie i mean collar city only has one goalie yeah. and like you said he is the best teammate he always is like one of the first guys to find me ask me if i need help carrying stuff or yeah. i don't even know if he knows i'm injured i think he's just that nice of a guy so he's always he like is. Hey, uh, what do you need? Anything I can help you with? Hey, it, yeah, he's he's awesome. He's definitely he is. He is. The guy wants for nothing and uh you know, salt of the earth guy. And you know, he could be starving and you could offer him a sandwich and he'd probably tell you you should eat it. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just that type of guy, which is awesome. He's awesome. Yeah. No, I love having those. I mean, yeah, it's so cool. Um Holy shit, we should wrap up. We've been an hour now. Yeah. But uh Yeah, no, we appreciate it, right? It's fun, man. And we we appreciate everything you do. And it's been awesome to have someone there. I mean, I am not very technological or good at the video stuff. I mean, I'm I'm like a caveman when it comes to that stuff. If your car breaks down or something, I can get you back on the road. 
if you need something built in your house, I'm your guy. But I tell you, when it comes to technology, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm standing over here with a freaking uh, hammer and a stone. <laughs> but I, uh, but we appreciate everything you've done, man. Because hey, it's put us on the map a little bit, right? And it's, you know, it's got, it's generated some interest from people, and it gets the word out, and it, it you know, talk about people's experiences and whatnot, and, and uh, it's enjoyable, man. And we love it. And every time I see, it, I'm like, man, that guy's back again. Oh my God, there he is. He's back again. You must love it. You must love it. I do. And, and uh, we, we love it. So we appreciate you. So and, I, you know, it's yeah. Thank you. It's good to hear. But I like I said, it's all Paul. Paul just yeah. like. You're like, I want to be part of whatever you're doing because we're going to really can go at. I didn't know any of this until my son taught me how to run like a lot of this so I could kind yeah. of catch up. That's yeah. why we started just holding their cell phones. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's kind of gone crazy. And uh, I might now, basically, thanks to Paul, I have another work alternative that I never knew how to do any of this six months ago. Yeah. You know what, dude? And I'll tell you, all it takes is one hilarious story to just blow up on YouTube or something funny. You know, I don't know what that'll be, but I mean, you never yeah. know. And I, I can tell you, I, you know what I do love about your presence on here is rocking the headphones with the mic. Don't ever get rid of that. Because <laughs> people will be like, you know, there's Bluetooth technology. And I'm just like, nah, you got to rock that old school stuff. Well, don't even, Don't even buy into any of that. The best part is I've got them sitting on my desk. They're right here. I could wear the AirPods if I wanted to. No, I love that mic and everything. That's awesome. I like the background too. Thank you for the background. Yeah, no problem. That's I usually try to, before I get anybody, I always like sit here and I crop. Uh, it's all Mark. Because uh, yeah. Mark takes awesome Rocky. photos. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to make it look like Jim's a you know? cow. I was debating if I wanted to. <laughs> I was, because I've heard the guys how they call you fake Mark. So I was debating taking the cow out and just putting where's the beef over the top. But I was like, yeah. no, nah, we'll do it this way so we can keep it kind of yeah. uh, PG. Listen to Gonzola's interview when we hang up because, oh, oh my God. Oh, we, I couldn't stop swearing. Like It was just one of those. It was more like he was drinking. I went out and did what I do and came back and we just – Oh my, I was laughing so hard. My wife came in at one point to see if I knocked things over. Cause like my foot was stomping on the ground and I was slapping the desk. It was... <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. We should probably get all on one, but I do love the, uh, I do. Yeah. I picked up a couple of nicknames now. The other one was uh, the, the snow snake, which was that's uh, via Joe Dowdy, who was on our team last year, but uh, he was plays this game called snow snake where, they throw this, they build this track and they throw this long pole down it. And I don't know, it sounds pretty cool to me. I think they stand around and, and maybe they drink. I don't know. Maybe yeah, they no, I've seen it. It's a big thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so we, uh, so I've, uh, I, I uh, had a lot of interest in it, asked a lot of questions. So now they call me the Snow Snake. So it's either Snow Snake or Faith Farms. I don't really get my name much in the locker room, unfortunately. <laughs> well, Faith Farms sounds better than Snow Snake. Snow yeah. Snake does not sound good, especially if Al's standing next to you. It's like, I don't really want to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, it's. I appreciate it, man. Let me know what else I can do for you. I'll reach out to Crosby, see if he can get a hold of you. Yeah, and like I said, uh, I touched base with Sully, so I'm setting something up with him. But okay. anybody else, if you guys just throw it out there, hey, he's looking to get a hold of you guys and give him my cell phone number. Yeah. Because, yeah, the more of these I can schedule, they take a little bit to go through. So it'll, yeah. uh, like, this one probably won't. Yours is not nearly as bad as Gonzalez. I had edited out so many. I just stopped editing out the swear words after a little while. Like we sat yeah. there. My wife spent the first day just trying to cut out like parts that we knew, like, okay, this can't be on. This definitely can't be on. This can't be on. And then I'm, it took us. Yeah, I'm trying to be a little PC for you. Um, I mean, I guess I could really throw it out there, but I mean, I'm like, I did, you know, I, I'm a little bit uh, older in my uh, maturity and my work ways. So I know that you probably don't want to have to go through and edit it for hours. Oh, yeah. We're going to do a, uh, a regular, like, just off the collar one that'll be basically not made for kids. You need to be PG-13. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can put me in on that one. Awesome. So, yeah. Been <laughs> awesome right. talking to you. All right, buddy. Take care, man. Yeah. yeah.